holy, holy is He, is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Praise God. You know, I was thinking of uh, Tony and David. Some of y'all remember, but a lot of them you won't. They were part of our church till they moved to Florida. They retired down in Florida. And uh, if you think about them this week, just say a prayer for them. The ones that know them, I, I know you do, Joyce, Deanna, Michael, Hilda, Judy. <laughs> Some of us know them, but they've been going quite a while now, but I still see them on Facebook. You know that uh, throughout my life, I've gotten words of knowledge from the Lord, and it started when I was 12 years old. And I didn't know at the time it was a word of knowledge because I wasn't saved, didn't know the first thing about it. And uh, the Lord told me I was going to marry a preacher. <laughs> I knew it with all my heart. I believed it with everything in me. It was just a, a surety, you know, that I knew. And when I married Gerald, I was very disappointed because he wasn't a preacher when we got married. <laughs> He became one later. There's a few things that stick in my mind that the Lord told me that I knew for sure, without a doubt. Like when I first held Melissa, I knew she was going to be my baby. I didn't doubt at all. God was telling me that. And then another time when uh, we had our church down south, it was a little Baptist church, and we were visiting this lady in the community, and uh, she had a dialysis port on her arm. And I looked at that port, and all of a sudden it washed over me that I was going to be on dialysis at one point in my life. And I figured, well, maybe that's when I'm real, real old and it's not as bad. But I knew it. I knew I was going to be on dialysis. And sure enough, two or three years ago when I had my accident, I was on dialysis. And God took me off of it. God healed me. Now, he let me know ahead of time I was going to be on it. And I don't know why he tells me these things, but sometimes they have a purpose. And then with Melissa, she had a miscarriage. She had a lot of miscarriages, and her little baby had died at four months old. And she wanted another little boy. She just wanted it so bad. And she couldn't get pregnant again. And we were praying for her and praying for her, and finally she got pregnant. And I told her, I said, Melissa, this is the little boy you wanted. She says, oh, I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful. She went to three doctors, three different doctors that had ultrasounds done because they kept saying it was a little girl. And finally one day, I, she was all upset. I said, well, listen, who are you going to listen to, the doctor or God? She said, Mama, I'm going to listen to God. I know it's a boy, but go out and buy all boy clothes. And she did. And she had the most beautiful little baby boy. I knew it. God told me it was going to be a boy. There was no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then God told me years ago that I was going to write a book. And I said, Lord, I don't know the first thing about writing books. So I went out and I rented a, a typewriter at that time. They didn't have computers. <laughs> so I rented an old manual typewriter. Those were so hard to type on. And I sat out at it. And I tried to think of something to write about, and I did not have a clue. So I gave the typewriter back. I said, well, Lord, I don't know. This one must not be from you. But you know, as the years passed, he kept telling me I was going to write a book. And then he gave me the name of it. He said, you're going to call it Walking a Tightrope While Wearing Combat Boots. And I thought, wow, that's a crazy name for a a book, but now that I know better, I know we do walk a tightrope and we do wear combat boots because we're always fighting the devil. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. So a few years back, God published my book and uh, I was so thrilled, but it's not selling. So <laughs> I guess it was just something he wanted me to do. And then I said, Lord, could I write a fiction book just for fun? And he gave me one. I mean, the ideas just kept flying in my head. And by then, I had a typewriter. I mean, a computer. And uh, so I wrote this book called Embracing the Light. And it's not a bestseller. But you know, I sell two to three books every single month for the last, what, five years? Every single month. And I don't advertise it. I don't talk about it. I don't have anything to do with it no more. And God sells them word of mouth every two or three years, so it must be kind of good. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be good if, if God dictated the words. But anyway, God will give you what you seek. 
You know, he, he will give you what you seek. And even things you don't seek. And sometimes you have a crazy thought in your head. And if you know it's God telling you, hang on to it. Have faith. Believe. Because when God tells you something, He's going to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just so excited about the Lord. He's just He's just so good. He's opened so many doors in my life. When I was 12, I think the reason I wanted to marry a preacher was because I've been abused so much in my life that it just sounded nice to think of a preacher. You know, you usually think of preachers being kind-hearted and gentle. And God blessed me with that when Gerald became a preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he gave me the four kids. I, I couldn't even get pregnant. He gave me four kids. God will bless your life if you will bless his life. Amen. And that sounds strange saying you're going to bless God, but what he wants is your obedience. Mm -hmm. He wants you to listen to him, to obey him. He wants you to have fellowship with him. I mean, if you never had fellowship with your husband, how would you know him? How would you know anything about him? You have to have fellowship with somebody to get to know him. And it's the same with God. And he wants our fellowship. He's begging for it. Begging I'll never forget when we were still in, uh, in our little parsonage down south, and uh, I had this dot matrix printer. Some of you might know what, it's, what a dot matrix printer is, one of the first ones that came out with. And I had my first home computer that didn't even have a hard drive. <laughs> you had to just keep putting these floppy disks in. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I was do doing up a Bible study for the ladies in the parsonage, and uh, I was going to use John 3.16 as my focal point. And when I, I had a Bible problem that I used, and when I typed in the verse, it would pull the Bible verse up. Well, the printer started going crazy. It started saying, God so loves, so loves, so loves, so loves, that he died, he died, he died for you, over and over. And it just read out this beautiful message that I couldn't see how it could come out of that Bible verse or out of that uh, printer or anything. And uh, I called the people who made the, uh, the software for the program, and they said, there's no way it could have wrote that. There's no way. It only writes what you put into it. This was God talking through this old dot matrix printer about how much he loved me, how much he loves his children. And to me, that always stuck as a special place in my heart because God directly told me that He loves, He loves, He loves, He adores, He adores, He adores, He adores His children. If we could just feel that love, we'd want to run, get on our face, and just worship the Lord all day long. But sometimes it, it seems like God is so far away. You know, I've been at that point so many times in my life, even after all the miracles he's done in my life, and I talk about all my miracles in my book, uh, Walking the Tightrope. But even after all the miracles, all the answer prayers he's done in my life, do you know I have the nerve to get away from him sometimes? <laughs> I get stagnated, and I say, God, where are you? Well, he's still there. I'm the one that moved. And I know y'all have all heard that saying, God didn't move, you did. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so true because we do move. We get distracted by things in our life. We get distracted by what's going on in our life. And all of a sudden, God's not first place anymore. He's way away. Well, let me tell you something. You open your ears, you can still hear from Him. And if you start paying attention, He'll draw you back to Him. He'll draw you back to Him. I'm a registered nurse, and when we lived down south, I worked in home health, and uh, I had this uh, CD by T.D. No, was a tape at the time by T.D. Jakes, and I had listened to it. And it was okay, it wasn't that good, but it was in my car, and uh, I was away from the Lord, and I kept begging the Lord, please, Lord. I had just got out of nursing school. I'd been so stuck in the book studying and studying and studying that God became second place. He wasn't my first place anymore. And I kept saying, God, I feel like I'm hitting against a brick wall. Help me get back to you. Help me get back to you. And uh, I was just driving along for nothing else to do. I put the tape in the CD player. And T.D. Jakes, and I had listened to this tape before. It had been in my car probably a year. T.D. Jakes was saying, right now, 
God is bringing somebody back to him. Now that's not a coincidence. God was speaking to me from that old tape that had been in my car maybe a year. I mean, that he had preached years ago and that I had listened to before. But right then, I knew God was speaking to me. Well, God is speaking to somebody, either in this house or on the internet, who's going to be listening to this message. God is speaking to somebody right now, and he's saying, I'm bringing you back. I'm bringing you back, and you're going to be stronger than ever. Hallelujah. You come as God leads.